Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In just a few months, text-to-image models have become extremely popular and you can use them to generate images for use cases like uh, content creation, obviously, uh, synthetic data generation, and all kinds of different things. And those models, and particularly the stable diffusion models, are really large models. And so far, in order to get good performance, the only option was to use GPUs for inference. But thanks to work we've been doing with Intel recently, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Intel CPUs to generate images with stable diffusion models in under five seconds, right? Don't believe me? Let's get started. So before we start accelerating, we need to know what the baseline is, okay? So let's start by running just a vanilla stable diffusion pipeline on, uh, on an AWS instance. Uh, powered by um, a new generation Xeon CPU uh, with the Sapphire Rapids architecture. Okay, I've told you about those already 10 times. So go and watch the previous videos if you want to know why those are really cool CPUs. And uh, here, basically, we're creating a simple stable diffusion pipeline with the diffusers library uh, and a model from the hub. Okay, and we're uh, just generating images just a few times and averaging the uh, the latency, right? And we print out the, the average latency, okay? So nothing complicated. Let's just run this. I'm using a, a vanilla PyTorch environment here, so I'll just go and run this, and we'll see what the, what the baseline is, okay? All right, let's give it a second. So I'm running a couple of warm-up iterations um, just to, you know, have meaningful numbers were in running the actual predictions. Okay, so let's just see what the number is. It should be around 30 seconds. Okay, so that's the warm-up iteration and here's the the first real iteration. Yeah, we see it's gonna be around it's gonna be around 35 seconds. So okay, so we've run our five iterations, averaged out the values. And we can see average latency here is 36 seconds. Okay, that's quite faster than on previous generation Xeons, but it's probably still a bit too slow for production use, right? So now we can start accelerating. And there are different ways to do this, but in this video, I'm gonna show you first how to accelerate inference using OpenVINO, which is a, an Intel tool that optimizes models. And we've integrated it in our optimum Intel library. Okay, so let's see how we do this. So starting from this code here, that we saw, right, with the stable diffusion pipeline, we're just gonna obviously install optimum Intel and open Vino. I'll put all the setup steps in the video description. It's really a, just a, a pip install command. We're gonna switch to this code, okay? So what we're gonna do here, is we're literally going to replace our stable diffusion pipeline with an OV, OpenVINO, stable diffusion pipeline. That comes from up the Optimum Intel library. Okay, so that's about it, right? So we're going to run, again, a few warm-up iterations, okay? And we're gonna see what happens then, right? Okay, so let's just run the open Vino version, see how, what happens then. Okay, remember we started from yeah, 36 seconds. So we're going to do the same, load the model with um, the open Vino pipeline. It's going to get automatically optimized by the open Vino runtime. And then we're going to run a couple of warm ups and then we're going to start predicting. Okay. Okay, so just switching to the open Vino pipeline takes us down to 16 seconds. Okay, so from 36 to 16 in one line of code. That's pretty good. That's pretty good and that's really easy to do, right? But 16 is probably still a bit too slow, right? If you want to generate, you know, thousands and thousands of images a day, or if you need to generate, you know, a whole maybe 10,000 or 100,000 images for a data set, that's still a bit too slow. So what can we do next? Well, 
starting from the same code, as I mentioned, we can actually apply a static shape to the pipeline. And uh, let me explain why this matters. So when you create a, a, a pipeline like this one here, there's no assumption on the size of the images that you're going to generate. So you could generate, you know, 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 or really any kind of, um, of size that the, that the model supports. But in practice, it's quite likely you're going to be generating um, just a few sizes or maybe just one, right? So if you know that all your images are going to be, let's say, 512, 512 pixels, then uh, giving this information to, to OpenVINO is going to help optimize the model further because now you can use, you know, statically sized tensors for all the layers and apply more optimizations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. And, you know, if you need just, let's say, 256 by 256 and 512 by 512, then you can create two pipelines and uh, optimize them and use either one or the other depending right so um so it's a great it's a great uh, uh trick to really accelerate those uh those models so let's run that thing again with the static uh, the static shape and we can compare okay so let's just save this and run it again okay it's going to take a, a few more seconds and then we can see the results okay so we've run again the the baseline open Vino pipeline and we see we get you know 16 seconds again and you can see now we're actually predicting with a statically shaped pipeline and it is much much faster right and in fact we're even under 4.5 seconds so this is a good run so we started at 36 plus took it down to about 16 with the uh, open Vino and slashed it down to 4.5 seconds which is, you know, definitely fast enough for a lot of real life use cases. And, um, and this goes to show, you know, you don't have to go and use uh, GPU all the time. There are some use cases where GPUs are required, but in this particular case, you could very well run your stable diffusion inference on CPU and, and you know, scale out to easily to as many servers as you need to to have right so i think this is a really really great collaboration again between uh, between intel and hugging face uh, if you want to learn more about this uh, obviously i would encourage you to go check out the optimum intel library uh, we have you know, examples and uh, and docs etc etc um i actually wrote a blog post on this uh, with uh, my colleague uh, ella who's the the lead developer for optimum intel so great job ella and, uh, and you can find uh, the actual setup, etc. And last but not least, I would encourage you to go check out the Intel org page on the Hugging Face Hub, uh, where you'll find some developer resources, some examples. They have a great uh, space where they compare stable diffusion inference on the brand new Xeons and the older ones. And we can, we can see the speed up there. And of course, they have lots of very interesting models uh, you know quantized models etc etc so go and check that out if you're interested in performance optimization okay well that's really what i wanted to tell you today so thank you for watching i hope this was useful and uh and i'll be back very quickly with more video and definitely more stable diffusion videos okay see you and until next time keep rocking